In this video, we are going to be going over the process of building a launcher for your Scrambler Champion Kit. The list of materials and access to all other guides and helpful diagrams can be found on our website under the kit instructions page, which is linked in the description below. Just another quick note, this launcher is largely the same as the launcher from last year, but has a couple of minor changes. If you've built the launcher from last year, you can skip to the new content by checking the timestamps in the description. So the first step is to cut a 2 foot by 4 foot half inch plywood board into the required components. And most hardwood stores you go to will be able to do these cuts for you. So you can see here that we want to cut 8 inches off the board lengthwise and 10 inches off in the other direction. In terms of the orders of the cuts, you want to cut that red line first and then the blue line and then the green line. Cutting it in this order will allow you to only need one two foot by four foot board to complete the main frame of the launcher. You'll also need a roughly three foot long piece of two by four to help assemble this launcher. From that three foot piece of two by four, you need to cut a 15 inch long piece and two eight inch long pieces. The next step is to assemble the main frame of the launcher. And at this step, we're going to be attaching two, the two of the 8 inch by 24 inch pieces of plywood to the main 16 inch by 38 inch piece of plywood. And in doing this, we're going to be using both of the 8 inch long 2 by 4 pieces to help make that connection a little bit more sturdy. Now you can see here that I've clamped these 2x4 pieces and the plywood pieces together and the reason for that is because I don't really have any helpers here uh, but if you do have someone to help you hold things together you may not need to use any clamps like you see me do here. And this is just another view of that clamp just to give you a little bit of a better idea of how we are orienting these boards before going ahead and drilling them. So now we can go ahead and drill into the 2x4 from the back of the base board. Um, and when doing so, you don't necessarily need to use any you know, pilot holes, though it could definitely help you here. And you don't have to be perfectly center uh, in your you know, placement of these screws. And now we can go ahead and drill another set of four screws into the other board that is making up this side of the frame. And now we can go ahead and assemble the other side of the main uh, launcher frame. And again, here you can see I've just clamped the boards in the exact same way we did with the other side. And just like with the other side, we're going to run four screws from the back of the baseboard into that 2x4 that is in between the baseboard and the right piece that's making up the frame. Finally, we can run four more screws from that sideboard into the 2x4, and this completes the main frame of the launcher. So now we are going to go ahead and assemble the top pulley, and to do so you're obviously going to need the top pulley 3D part, two V-groove bearings, three of the 3-inch long number 6-32 bolts, and of course, three of the number 6-32 hex nuts. So what we're first going to do is we are going to attach the V-groove bearings to their respective slots. One goes at the very front of the top of the uh, top pulley piece, and one goes into the middle of that top pulley piece. And then we're going to attach one more bolt into the very back of the top pulley piece, and, and that piece intersects the circular hole you see there, and what this, what this uh, bolt is going to be used for is going to be used to lock a guide rod in place to make sure our weight block falls in, falls in, the same, in, a, in a straight line every single time. 
So we can also go ahead and assemble our front pulley and to do so we're just going to be inserting a dowel in between the two holes on our front pulley mount and then making sure that our front pulley wheel is also on that dowel. So now we can go ahead and attach our top pulley to the top of our baseboard. And when doing this, you want to make sure that your top pulley is centered on that baseboard. And now we can also go ahead and attach our guide rod holder to the bottom of our baseboard, again making sure that it is centered on that baseboard. The next step is to cut a 5 16 inch diameter metal rod so that it, it fits from the circular slot in the rod holder that's on the bottom of the launcher to just under that bolt on the top pulley piece. Now, the reason we're doing this is because when we're launching the vehicle, we want to have that bolt in place. And again, that prevents this rod from jumping around and falling off the, the launcher during the actual launching of the vehicle. The next step is to cut our aluminum channels to size. Now the length of this aluminum channel really depends on the length of your vehicle. The distance of my vehicle from the very front of the wooden dowels on my backstop to the very back of the chassis was 73 centimeters. Now you want the length of this aluminum channel to be roughly 3 centimeters less than the total length of your vehicle. Therefore, the length of the aluminum channel I had to use was 70 centimeters because again the length of my vehicle was 73 centimeters. The next step is to go ahead and attach the aluminum channel to the guide rail mount 3D printed part. Now the best way to go about doing this is to mark the placement of the holes on the aluminum channel, drill those holes, and then verify that they fit onto the 3D printed part. Now we can attach the aluminum channel to the 3D printed part using two 3 quarters inch long number 6-32 bolts and hex nuts. Now we can attach the guide rail tip to the other end of that aluminum channel using some super glue. Now the next step is to build the weight block and this step is largely the same as last year and the only main change that we've made here is we've now added a uh, block of wood to the very bottom of this weight block and this serves two purposes. The first purpose is that it prevents the aluminum from deforming after multiple hours and multiple runs of testing where the weight block would hit the uh, guide rail holder and then deform. Another purpose it serves is that it allows you to have better ability to be able to make these screws flush with the wood. And this prevents any damage that the falling weight could have on that 3D printed part. Now, just a quick recap of what we're doing here is we've cut two pieces of aluminum angle, three quarters inch aluminum angle beams to 14 inches and we've cut a block of wood from our scrap plywood to be able to fit under these two aluminum angle beams. Now it is difficult to make these markings of the uh, weight, middle weight block 3D printed part onto the uh, aluminum pieces themselves using just a pencil. So what I've done here is I've just placed some pieces of tape over the uh, 3D printed part and marked where the holes were and now what I'm doing is I'm marking the center of the aluminum angle beams and then, I'm, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those pieces of tape on top of the 
uh, aluminum pieces where I want to drill the holes and then drill those holes and then verify that the weight block piece is able to fit on those holes. With my holes drilled, I can now go ahead and assemble the weight block. And to assemble the weight block, you're just going to need four of our one inch long drywall screws. And what we're going to do is we are going to first screw in our, our drywall screws a little bit and then make sure that they go through the aluminum angle and the 3D printed part. And now we can add our wheel weight to our weight block to make sure that we get as close to the 2 kilogram limit as possible without exceeding it. With all of our weight pieces added, we can now go ahead and attach our eye hooks to the center of the weight block. The large eye hook goes on the side and the small one goes in the middle. Now these weights have these wheel weights. They do have an adhesive that allows them to stick very to stick very well. Uh, however, for a little bit of extra reassurance, you can go ahead and wrap some duct tape around the the wheel weights and the weight block. And this is just to give you a little bit more reassurance that nothing falls when you're testing, so you don't get any competition or construction violations. Next step is to attach the guide rail to our launcher. And just like with the rod holder and the top pulley, we're just going to make sure that this guide rail is centered on the, on the back piece of the launcher and then drill it in with our one inch long drywall screws. So now what you'll notice if you look at the back of the launcher is you'll notice some of those screws sticking out. Now while that may not be a very big issue, it can interfere with the weight block falling. So what you want to do is if you have a file on hand or you have some bolt cutters on hand, you want to go ahead and cut off those ends of the screws. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the front pulley to the launcher. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to attach our vehicle uh, excuse me, insert our vehicle onto the guide rail. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to make sure that our positioning of this front pulley is actually accurate. So what we're going to do is we are first going to use our drill and two of the one inch long drywall screws to attach the front pulley onto the 15 inch long 2x4. Again, making sure that this front pulley is centered on that 15 inch long piece. Afterwards, we can go ahead and drill these, this uh, piece onto the uh, launcher itself. So now we're going to assemble our scope mount. And to do this, what we're going to do is we are going to glue one magnet into each of these four magnet slots. Now you want to make sure that when you're doing this the magnets are aligned so that when you go to uh, excuse me, the polarities of these magnets are properly aligned so that when you try to place these place that bottom scope holder piece onto that angled piece that they actually do stick together and they don't repel each other. And now using four 20 millimeter long M3 bolts, we can secure the scope to the scope holder using the bottom and top 3D printed scope holder pieces. Now there aren't any hex nuts or threads in either of these pieces, but the holes on the bottom scope mount are small enough to the point where you are able to actually thread these bolts into that piece.
the last step is to attach our mount to the launcher. And the only change here with the screws is that you will need one two inch long drywall screw to mount that very front hole of the scope mount. Now it doesn't matter if you put your, uh, if the put the mount on the right side or the left side. The only thing that will affect is whether you would want your vehicle to curve to the right or to the left. Here I'm mounting the scope on the right hand side of the launcher. And because I'm mounting it on the right hand side of the launcher, I would want my vehicle to curve towards the right. Now, oppositely or conversely, if you mount your scope on the left, you would want your vehicle to curve towards the left. And with that, your Scrambler launcher has been built. Please check out our other videos regarding how to build your vehicle and how to calibrate your Scrambler. With that said, thank you all for watching and stay unfazed.